everyone. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the backstory of moth, some moth lore, and my first experiences with gore. So, without further ado, let's get some stuff out of the way. Um, if you like the most disturbing content as well as the most controversial commentary on YouTube, please hit subscribe and check out the links in the description to our Patreon, Twitter, Discord, and pretty soon the OnlyFans once I get my approval, well, approved. For those of you who do not support that, I don't really care. I didn't ask you to look at my wee-wee. I mean, that's for the people who want to. So I'm going to utilize the resources I have to, you know, gain financially. Why not? But anyway, we're going to talk about my first experiences with gore, the things that led me down this path, and my thoughts on it, basically. So sit back, relax, get a nice hot bowl of soup so we can talk about some really disgusting things. So the story takes place in a time when I was about seven or eight years old. My balls have not dropped yet, and I still really like Digimon and Pokemon. Monster Rancher 2. It was a time when Blockbuster Video was actually a thing. Alright, so for those of you who don't know what that is or VHS is, you're probably too young to be here. But, so I, we'd rent VHSs all the time, my family. Like, my mom, that was her thing. You know, like, eat a handful of fucking, like, Valium and, like, watch ten movies and pass out. But... It was cool for me and my brothers because we'd rent games, we'd get movies too. I was more into games and stuff back then even, and uh, that's actually where I bought my first copy of Final Fantasy VII. Cool shit. But, my brother, on the other hand, got to rent Faces of Death and Traces of Death. For those of you who do not know, back in the 70s and I believe the early 80s, uh, Faces of Death was a series of gore compilations that was primarily fake, uh, other than some medical gore, I think some accidents and animal stuff. Uh, really distasteful stuff, but still, it's pretty pretty rough to watch. It's pretty decently dramatized. By today's standards, no, absolutely not. Now, Traces of Death came out afterwards by a different company, uh, I, I think. And that actually featured real gore. And I was exposed to both, as well as bum fights. I don't, I don't know if that's really worth mentioning. Um... That was one of the first experiences. However, being so young and not... And my brother even told me it was fake. I, I don't know. I, I mean, letting me watch it was one step into being fucking irresponsible. But at least he was kind enough to tell me, Hey, buddy, it's fake. It's not real. Don't worry about it. So it really didn't affect me. But believe it or not, well, normal horror movies did. Now, fast forward a little bit. I was about 12 or 13 years old when this occurred. Now, this is something that actually affected me. And this is my first experience talking... I'm sorry, this is my first, this was my first time looking up gore online, okay? I was hanging out with my cousin, who was very, very close to me at the time. So, naturally, we would have a lot of, like, different internet exploration experiences together, primarily involving weird, dumb, crazy, st stupid shit and shock sites. Well, we decided to look up what a beheading video looked like, because we both have never seen that, and we thought, well, well what the hell? Now, this was a time when even Ogreish was up, I believe, is around 2007, um... This wasn't on Live Leak. We saw this. I don't recall the site. Could have even been rotten for all I know. Um, it turns out this video was actually featured in MD Pulp 2, and it's the Russian neo Nazi beheading. And the Russian, some Russian officials have deemed this fake. However, the beheading is very real. You know, just uh, like a lot of other countries, it's just like, nothing bad happens here. Like, yes, it does. This is terrible. While incredibly distasteful as well and extremely disturbing, the quality of this video was not recorded on a potato, so being about 12, I'm gonna say 12 years old and seeing this for the first time literally had me so fucking shook and rattled for a month straight, and I was vomiting, like, the whole day. Like, I just could not. The video starts off very intense, okay? First off, we see the, uh, Swazi, and two hulking gentlemen. Like... What in the fucking Sasquatch? <sighs> Over to uh, Muslim folks, okay? I, I don't. I feel bad. The victims. I, I just. I just. I'm thinking about how they die. Like I literally just watched this. It's kind of surreal, coming full circle. They have one guy um, with a tracksuit on the ground to start this video off, and they viciously start while well, sawing his head off with a K-bar knife. And it is very slow and very reminiscent of Check Clear as far as the whole rip back cut, rip back kind of thing goes um you see my mindset when i thought that oh you know in the middle east with the conflict going on in the 2000s i mean there's still conflict but you know what i mean when that was fresh in america's mind after 2001 when you hear about beheadings you think like a guillotine you think like an axe like a quick blow despite those methods not actually being like that necessarily either um but in a child's mind who is somewhat you know edgy you would 
that's that was my mind. So I didn't think of you know someone actually getting their heads off with a knife as a possibility. This took ninety seconds. This guy was just. It's horrible. It's bad. Like, it's actually still very bad watching it now. Then what they also do is they already have freshly dug graves for these gentlemen, and they shoot the other guy in the head and kick him in, like, World War II execution style. It's, it's very vile stuff. They throw up the edgy boy salute, and it's just, it, it's all disgusting. And what makes it even worse is it's a genuine hate crime. Uh, one thing that made this video incredibly um, controversial, uh, not just for Russia, but the world and gore sites in general, was the fact that it was a uh, National Socialist um, act. Now, they were tied supposedly to an organization called like the National Socialist Party of Rus, and Russian officials have deemed that possibly to be fake. However, the individuals are real, um, but the, uh, as a whole... It, an organization may not ex may or may not exist in Russia. There's not a whole lot more information on that because it kind of stopped after 2007 when the video was uploaded. But I kind of have doubts that there's not actual groups out there doing this. In fact, there were some uh, two guys, and I don't know if they're directly tied to this video or not, who were arrested and uh, convicted for killing 27 people, um, primarily Muslims and just dark-skinned people they deemed immigrants and toxic to the Russian culture and country, which is just absolutely fucking disgusting. And I find it hard to believe that these groups aren't linked at all, or there is no groups. It's like, why deny that? Why not just handle your problems? It makes you look kind of mediocre and foolish as a military country in general uh, to just deny things. Like, the la 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 la, bad things don't happen here. It's like, that's kind of foolish. Bad things happen everywhere. This, in particular, was just shocking because not only how it happened, who it happened to, and why, but the quality of the video was very high for the time. This is at a time when definitely having three whole pixels was, like, your best bet. I mean... I believe that was even around the time the Saddam Hussein hanging video came out, and if you've ever seen that, that was, like, one whole pixel. Man, you can tell, like, there's a Minecraft figure missing now in the background. It's insane. But this in particular is actually hard to find now. Um, the only part that I've seen of it was actually an MD Pope 2, and it's not even the full clip, because the full clip starts out different. Uh, MD Pope cuts to the good parts, which really is just <sighs> mediocre mixtape, in my opinion. Like, they all are. It's three hours of boredom, like, just looking through it. I don't know. It's because I don't find entertainment and gore, necessarily. I it, do have a morbid curiosity and seeing this video did peak it and it did give me some closure mentally because while i'm not necessarily haunted by anything i do that was one thing that has stuck with me since i've seen it and it's made me morbidly curious but i've never really went hunting for it but it turns out well the screenshots are very easily findable uh that really took me by surprise and motivated me to make this video but I think those acts are really what started to make me even more morbidly curious, and this was around the time that I sunk into a very low depression as a young teen, and then I started desensitizing myself to gore intentionally, um, hoping to make myself more comfortable with death, which is some very, very my immortal I own an Evanescence CD kind of a mentality, but hey, everybody goes through stuff, right? Seeing it now, and seeing the things I see almost every day, the things that people send me over Discord are highly disturbing too. Um, people ask me questions, people are curious and want answers, and I'm more than happy to give that. I do have a lot more stuff coming out pertaining to, um, especially older gore or wartime things. Um, definitely keep an eye out for that. But I think this, and then when I started my channel, for more on the lore aspect, I think we've talked about a nice gory video for those who are itching for that, but let's talk about this. It's like what made me start motivating to make this kind of content for my channel, what made me uh, motivated to do this kind of stuff on YouTube, wasn't exactly like a passion thing. It was like, I have an interest in true crime and horror, and yeah, I was dabbling in that, I think, a little bit at the time, mostly with creepypastas, and I do just some rowdy-ass commentary and some bullshit skits. Uh, it was recommended to me to, to cover the Roddy McNutt case because of my activity on TikTok, and I covered social issues there. It was starting to boom, and there was a lot of problems I had had and a lot of thoughts I had, and Ronnie McNutt's video being spread around was a big factor. The video blew up, and then it kind of clicked. I realized, like, I'm in a niche that's not done well often. There's very few channels, in my opinion, that actually cover this kind of content well. Uh, one of the best channels that covers this content is Cold Raven's Nest. He also does um, stuff on his main channel, Cold Raven. But Cold Raven's Nest covers gore mixtapes and content like that. So if you're interested in content like me, who we dive into the most depraved kind of shit, then definitely check out his channel as well. 
But with that, I actually got to go record a video for Patreon finally because my last one got corrupted. I'm sorry. But thank you all for your support. Consider becoming a Patreon today. If you want to be a sugar daddy or a sugar mama, my wish list is in the description as well. There's some stuff on there I actually kind of really need. <laughs> I want to get more soundproofing stuff. Thank you all for the support. My Patreon link is in there as well, as well as my Twitter and Discord and all the fun stuff like that. You can also find me on Instagram at plagued underscore moth. But without further ado, I'm going to hop on out of here and record another disturbing video for you all. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Be fucking normal again.